Peace and grand rising to the air. Today is November the 25th, 2020. On the Gregorian calendar, 1440 on the sun calendar, and 1441 on the moon calendar. And we we prefer the moon calendar, 1441. Uh, we want to first start out with some gratitude to our ancestors for all that they have done through us all. We have... Um, Got any corporate boogeyman so in your conference, Jeff? Process, progress. <laughs> we've made so much progress. We're grateful to them for all that they've done through us in that manner as a nation and as the government. We have seen the things that we said come to pass. The commands that we've given have come to fruition and are still coming to fruition. Um, the majority of us have that are awake and who've been awake for the last, at least the last two or three years, are seeing the complete change in everything that's going on in our territories to include um, fake courts not operating randomly like they used to operate. Um, and in many cases, they're shut down completely. Um, we're seeing policy enforcers who are leaving the heirs alone and letting the heirs travel freely in the jurisdiction of our ancestral inherited estate. And that's happening in territories all over. We still have some work to do there. Um, it's not complete. We finished at this point, but it will be. It's well on its way. Um, and it's only a matter of time. We know that. For us to get this far, it was only a matter of time. And now we're moving forward as well in all areas. And then Moorish commerce is beginning to unfold in a way that it never was before previously. And so we're excited about all of that that's going on. We have to keep doing what we're doing. Again, proclaiming sovereign status on the public record. Um, terminating all corporate contracts. And there are some who, who don't feel that they want to do that. You know, I'll, I've seen some, some who don't want us to terminate the corporate contracts, but we're doing it anyway because we know that the contracts are what kept us under the corporation, presumably. We've never really been under them, but the contracts were our consent to be under them. And so to terminate those corporate contracts like we've done and like Moore's continue to wake up and do is the key to the grand rising. That is how we go up and rise above the corporate construct, that capitalism construct. And so um, one thing we know for sure about that construct, and we're going to talk about this today, is that we've been saying in the past that it is a system that we put in place. The whole, everything that's going on on our land is being operated by a system that we design. And that system responds to our sovereign affidavit. However, in the past, the system was operating, but it was usurped by foreign commercial mercenaries. And those foreign commercial mercenaries were only able to do anything that they were able to do because we consented to that status. We, we stopped observing those things that our foremothers and forefathers taught us, like not using capital letters and black ink for things. And some don't see the importance of that now, and that's okay. You don't have to see it now, but you'll see it later. It'll come when it's time for it, for that lessons to 
to come, that awareness to come. Um, the system that we design has a name because we've named everything on the earth. We've named everything. That system has a name, and we have been saying the name of that system and not knowing that we're saying the name of the system. And so, again, that system is our system. We put it in place. And the usurpers were pretending like they controlled it through the use of language, words, writing, writing, letters, capital letters. And that is another reason why they had to keep giving us paper. When we thought that the paper was talking to us, it was not speaking to us, okay, and um, it's the letters on the paper, that's where the hypothecation began, is we stopped knowing how to read and stopped knowing how to write in our sovereign status. Reading and writing in our sovereign status is very, it's the key. It's one of the major keys. There are other keys, but that's one of the major ones. Because if they can pretend to be talking to you and you think that they're talking to you just because they use some of the letters in our sovereign appellation, but then they capitalize one of them, then if even one letter is corrupted, and that's what foreign corruption is all about. That's what corruption in government is all about. The corruption is in the language and the writing. And in order for government corruption not to be on our land anymore, we must govern without the corruption. And some still don't want to believe that amalgamation is a corruption, but it is. Um, the foreign hybrid commercial mercenary person that we see today are the descendants of invaders. And that's why you keep hearing in the fake media them talking about racism and race wars and Black Lives Matter and all of that, that's a cover. They're covering for the fact that there's, there's no such thing as racism. Either you, you have dominion over the whole earth or you're an animal or in the animal kingdom of the earth. And that's why they use the term kings and kingdoms, like the lion kings because that, those are animal terms in capital letters. Those are animal terms. We are emperors and empresses, all of us, every last one of us. And they don't, that, that, that whole system does not want us to know that. That corrupt corporate capitalism system does not want us to stop using capital letters and black ink for everything. They want us to keep doing that so they can keep using all lowercase letters and red ink on documents that we don't see that they keep acting on or that they were previously acting on. And then by the time we get the documents, the document is in black ink with capital letters, but the foundational documents that they were acting on initially were in red in all lowercase letters. They're not going to let you see those. Some have seen them. For example, um, 
some of the documents that have gone out that I don't know if they slipped out or I don't know if they, you know, well, clearly there are no mistakes. But any documents that they were acting on previously that had any type of perceived authority were signed in red in all lowercase letters but with minus signs between each word or hyphens between each word, which indicates still that a debtor is attempting to be the sovereign. And so the system responded, has been responding previously to that, that hypothecation of us because it wasn't hearing from us. And when I say the system, I'm talking about the financial system, I'm talking about any any systems out there that have anything to do with with the things that we do. For example, the postal system, the universal postal union system. That system was responding to hypothecation. And then the financial and banking system was responding to hypothecations. And what they did was they, they stood in the way to emphasize that. So their teller, that's why they call them sellers. They're tellers, and that's why they call, you know, if you look on the fake birth certificates, those fake birth, birth certificates call uh, that which we thought was our mother's on those documents the informant. Someone has to speak. Someone has to speak. And when that someone speaks to the system, the system is going to do what that someone says. And the system does not look and see the sovereign, you know, to see if, if, if it's the sovereign speaking. The system knows our energy. And the system knows our voice. So when you talk about, you know, having dominion over the earth, it's a system that we put in place and we tell that earth system to do whatever we tell it to do, whether it be financial or otherwise, and that system will do it. It will do what we tell it to do. I will prove a little bit of that here just by a couple of scriptures from the Bibliotheliotech that they've been using. And again, they wanted us to look at the Bibliotheliotech and then toss it out so we wouldn't see this, but we'll see it. I'll show you right now. Judges, the fifth chapter. And verse 13, it says, Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty, the mighty more, the nobles. And when they say the Lord, just substitute that word for the law, the universal laws the laws of nature. If we don't speak, if the natural people don't speak, and we're not using our sovereign status and speaking in all lowercase letters in red, then the system will look for that, and if it, if it sees it from anywhere, it's going to respond to it. It's going to respond. So when we send our, how is this going to help us? Let's ask that question. How is that going to help the more? It's going to help us because when we put things in red and all lowercase letters, and we're seeing that now, we're seeing it now. The things that we command, it first shuts down on that side over there, and it doesn't respond to them anymore. And then it begins to wake up and respond to the voices that it should respond to. And that's another reason why we are going to continue having calls and putting them out, 
Because if we stop speaking out on the public record, and gratefully there are hundreds and hundreds of more speaking on the public record, which I'm, I'm excited about that, because it's not any one of our responsibilities, it's all of our responsibilities. But if we stop speaking, they're just going to start blabbing again and pretending like they're in control of something when they're not. We are. And that's the point and the purpose of putting the calls out on the public record. And the more who are putting calls out on social media and doing their court actions on social media, as we speak, and we're standing in our sovereign status as the court and as the law enforcement and the law makers, those others have to shut up, down. They have to. And we can see that that's happening. No one can deny that the foreign occupation is shutting down. And they would not shut down by themselves. They would just keep going and keep going if we hadn't said anything. Shutting down is not something they wanted to do. But they have to. And it's because we keep speaking. We are the government. We keep putting the commands and the law out there. And we're going to continue to do that. And continue to let them, you know, let them put the word out all over wherever we can and wherever we go and in all that we do. We are the law. We are the government. And the thing is, they've always known that. And now we know it. So Judges 513 states, that dominion was given over the noble. Dominion is the system. Dominion is the system. And so they took that whole system and used it and wielded it over us because we did not speak. And we didn't know who we were. And we stopped telling the heirs, and over a couple of generations, just a couple, we thought we were them, and we thought they were the ones in authority on our land, when they're not, never have been, never will be. It's always been us, always been us. So now, how is that going to help us? We're going to continue giving competent, sovereign, lawful, peaceful commands to the dominion system. We are imminent dominion. And we stated that previously a couple of years back. We have imminent dominion on the earth. And as of October the 8th, somewhere around the 8th and 9th, the system switched. And it didn't really switch. It just said, okay, we recognize the air. We don't recognize fakes. We recognize the real, the air. And as long as we keep hearing from the airs, we're going to continue doing what the airs say. And when I say we, it's the system. The movie The Matrix is a is a key. It's a it's a hint. It's an indicator that it's the system that when we mail out our documents or deliver our documents and we fire the corporate repeatedly, fire them. Tell them those that are pretending to breathe and pretending to be Americans, we fire them. And we say we're not talking to you either because they are not talking to us and we're not talking to them. When they speak, they were talking to a system. That's how come they never 
And then if we pretend to if we pretend to be that citizen system, then they go ahead and run rampant and do whatever they're going to do. And then we wonder why we're in the way of that and why we are why we were being violated that way. It's because they don't they don't recognize anything but a system. And when they speak to that system, if the system speaks back, it gives them permission to to move forward. But if we say we're not that system, and in fact we are we have dominion over the system. then guess what? Not only can they not proceed, they actually have to yield and get into, get out of the way. Because we're only speaking to the living, we're not speaking to the dead. And it's written all throughout the bibliotheliotech. Number one, what that system is doing. And number two, how to get the system to do what we tell it to do. I'll read another key in the bibliotheliotech, because the bibliotheliotech is, is a trust document, just like the Holy Quran as written, divinely prepared by the Prophet Noble Jew Ali. That is a divine trust document as well. And in Genesis 27, chapter, verse 40, it says, and by thy sword shalt thou live, and we know the sword is the word, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, the system, when we have the system in our hands, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. It is written. The yoke that we have had on our necks is broken. We have the dominion. And we are the eminent dominion. And they hypothecated even that term and used it and misspelled it and said eminent domain. And then they began taking properties and carrying on. But that's no longer valid. doesn't work for them. Not at all. We are the eminent dominion on the earth. So the answers have been right in front of us the whole time right in front of us on how to free ourselves. They can't free us, and they wouldn't if they could. So looking to them for freedom is looking in the wrong direction. There are other verses in the bibliotech that tell the heirs what dominion really means and what it's all about. Psalms 8 and 6 says, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You, heirs, have made them to have dominion over the works of your hands. You did that. We did that. We consented. We consented. Again, the works of our hands, we created everything, everything. And then we consented and gave them dominion over the works of our hands. And the rest of Psalms 8, 6, the rest of that verse says, you have put all things under his feet. That's a key too. The land, the earth, the resources. All of that. And the same way that we gave them dominion, we can take it back, and we've already done that. And we that's an ongoing process. It's not something you do just one time. It's something that you keep doing. You keep continuing to take dominion over that which is under your feet. 
because everything emanates from that. We come from the earth and all the resources that we need in order to continue the grand rising come from the earth. And when I say all, I mean all. All water, all food, all food that's good for us comes from the earth. Even the communication devices, the communication devices and things, the Internet, the phones, all of that, all of that starts under the earth. The earth is already wired. The ley lines are already placed. We did that. That's part of the Dominion system. We did all of that. Anything such as satellites and, you know, all of the things, communication devices, all of that kind of stuff, it had to be, it had to have a receptor under the, underneath the, the, the land first before it could even go up there and, and send back pictures and sound and all of that, frequencies, et cetera. So those resources are ours too, period. And no one has the right nor the authority to charge us for those things. We keep an accounting system of our own so that we know what we're using and what, what's going on with our resources and seeing where the resources can be allotted more evenly and equitably among the heirs, among the heirs, among the heirs, and not and no one else. The heirs and their subjects. Because and again subjects are property. That's why we say among the heirs. Everyone has to get in their rightful place. Everyone does. And so there are other hints, and they're not even hints. They're pretty overt when we know how to read about what we did and how to fix it in both the Quran, in all of those great writings, even in the hidden books that were not put in the Bibliophilio text. They stopped at 66 books for a reason. <clears throat> Another um, scripture in the Bibliophilio text that describes us and our relationship to the land. Again, they had us they had us quoting and saying things that was giving them consent. For example, the the national anthem, quote unquote. When they talk about from sea to shining sea, that part that they had us saying. Psalm 72 and 8, it says, He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the rivers to the ends of the earth. And any time, even based on the hermetic principle, any time you, you see the term he, it encompasses the she as well. And any time you see she, it encompasses the he. The feminine and the masculine reside together. When you say this is a matriarchal age, it is a matriarchal age, and the matriarchs are leading the way. And because the matriarchs are leading the way, it, it, because all comes from us, it's encompassing the males. They're a part of that. Matriarchal energy leads the way because we birth the nation. And if anything is to get back in order 
and eminent dominion is to be had, which it is, we're already there, then the matriarchal energy must lead the way. It must. And any attempt for that not to be the case by anyone, and I don't care if it's, it's foreign, foreigners who want to invoke patriarchy every five minutes, talking about a pope and all of that, all of that fraud, doesn't matter. The matriarchal energy leads the way. And we, we're the only ones who can fix this that we've created. And it starts with proper naming of that which is in our dominion. And proper naming means not using, it, it means not to use improper names. That's why they call their capitalization proper nouns. It's proper for them as servants and subjects to put a capital letter at the beginning to corrupt that which is natural. That's what the attempt was. And we just have to know we can't be mad at that. We have to actually do the right thing. Lowercase letters in red. Some don't see the importance of that, and that's okay. They don't have to see it right now. When when they're ready for that, they'll, the ancestors will give that one to them. We still denote the 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 um, subject in black ink with capital letters, and at some time soon, the blue ink, the living subject, will make their appearance as we so proclaim. But right now. There needs to be a line we need to delineate for the sake of properly identifying the heirs. Another uh, very important scripture in the Bibliotheliotech. Now keep in mind, the scriptures in the Bibliotheliotech that we see today were mistranslated because they used capital letters when they weren't supposed to. And they switched around all types of stuff and pretended to be the sovereign. In the Bibliotheliotech, that was done. That's why you see the word Lord in all capital letters throughout the Bibliotheliotech throughout the bibliotheliotech because they were hypothecating who the Lord really is. The Lord, the law. We are the law. We are the government. Psalms 119 and 133, the 133rd verse. It says, direct my steps by your word and let no iniquity have dominion over me. And anytime you see the word iniquity in the bibliotheliotech, you can, it, it actually means inequity in court. So direct my steps by your word. Our word is the law. Our word is the law. And when our steps are directed by our word and not theirs, no inequity will have dominion over us. Our word is spoken in our court, in our court action. And believe it or not, every time we open our mouths, it's a court action. We hold court everywhere. Everywhere, on the side of the road, in the grocery store, um, on the J-O-Bs that some have. We're holding court every time we open our mouths. 
and when we direct our own steps by our, our own word, then no inequitable court action by a corporate can have dominion over us. The answer to everything we need has been given to us. We have the key. We just have to know that it's the key when we're looking at it. That's another reason why the heirs must come out of those fraudulent commercial venues known as Christian churches in all capital letters. They have to come out of there because they're not being given the right interpretation of this trust document known as the Bible. They're being given a citizen, servant, slave interpretation, which is all that the foreigners can give. They cannot give a sovereign interpretation of the bibliotheliotech like we can. We're the sovereign. We're the only ones who can give a proper interpretation of the bibliotheliotech. That's why we don't have to throw it up, throw it away. We don't have to throw out the baby with the bath water. That's a trust document. And one of the most meaningful scriptures in the bibliotheliotech where our sovereign status and our sovereign court and our sovereign actions are concerned is found in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 14. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Let's put that sentence and that scripture in its proper place. This scripture is referring to color of law. Color of law. We're not under color of law. And then the grace period is the period that we're given in order to become competent. As we're standing in our competent status, in our sovereign status, for example, and we use this example because it's the most obvious example that we can think of that everyone can look and see. When we first woke up and began demonstrating our sovereign status and sharing the information and sharing how our demonstrations turned out, we were using black ink and capital letters on our government letterhead. And that was not competent on our part at the time, but the ancestors honored it anyway because the energy was sincere. The intention was to free ourselves. And so that grace period was given. And newly awakened Moors get the grace period. But when we know better, we must do better. We know better now and we're rising to the occasion and doing better. We're rising to the occasion and doing better. And it would it would behoove as many who know to go ahead and stand in your sovereign status where red ink and lowercase letters are concerned. Go ahead and, and, and put things there. And those who are on Job start signing everything in red in all lowercase letters and exercising all rights. Don't reserve rights anymore. Go ahead and exercise them. Exercise all sovereign rights at all times, nunk pro tunk. That means now for then. So that any contracts that were there previously are no longer valid. 
but that your sovereign status is reigning and has dominion over all, all resources, all land, all commerce is subject to our imminent dominion. But we must speak to it competently. We are preparing at some point to begin treating with one another and contracting with one another, the sovereigns only, and not any foreign occupiers. We're not talking about them, and we're not even talking to them. We're talking to one another and about one another. We'll, we're going to begin at some point contracting and being uh, and agreeing with one another in commerce. And we want to do that in a way that it cannot be violated by corporate occupation. And if we if we do contracts in capital letters in black ink, and that contract is seen by a corporate, they will recognize something on it. They can't recognize red ink and all lowercase letters because that's not talking to them. And we don't need them to recognize anything. And that's, the, that's, that's been a problem for some. Some want the dead corpses to recognize us. We don't need them to. In fact, if they recognize us, that means we need to fix something or change something. Put it in red in all lowercase letters and, and you know, fix it, change it, look to see what's going on. If they're answering back and talking back, that means they think they're speaking to a court in their dead system. So we don't expect them to talk back. We expect them to get out of the way and be quiet like corpses. Corpses are not supposed to be talking in the first place. Why is a corpse talking? Why? That's unnatural. And speaking of natural, the corpses are now placing on the record things about natural law and nature and nature's God. But that's because God is awake. Now, they're not talking to us. They're talking to one another. We can look at what they're saying and put put it in red in all lowercase letters, and it will then become a living word. So, and that goes for anything. That goes for things like VIN numbers on conveyances. They become living VIN numbers and proper and true natural VIN numbers, which means that the conveyance is natural, living, and true when we put them in red in all lowercase letters. That takes it completely out of any dead jurisdiction and, and puts it in a sovereign, lawful, living jurisdiction. And everything that we have, everything that we do, everything that we see and, 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 and use, should be noted that way. It should be scribed that way, scripted that way. Everything that we have and use with no minus sign. If there must be a sign, let it be a plus sign because we are the creditors. And that is a principle that we're going to continue to put forward repeatedly because it's that important. It makes the difference between the living and the dead. If we are writing like the dead, who's going to know the difference? And then the dead will start again hypothecating and acting like they're us.
1 Peter, the fifth chapter, and verse 11. Again, whenever we see him or he, it encompasses the matriarch. And whenever we see she, it encompasses our son. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 11, to him, that means to the heirs, who have broken the yoke of dominion off of their necks and have taken imminent dominion. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It says it right there. They're calling us by name there. My sovereign appellation there. Anytime you see the word amen, they pronounce it amen because that's what they want it to be. Amen, Ra. It is a praise to the sovereign heirs who are amen, Ra, of the bloodline and birthright of amen, Ra. And they say, to him, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In other words, that means we're talking about the heirs. To the heirs, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Who lives forever and ever? The heirs. Been here for trillions upon trillions upon trillions, and we're not going anywhere. We've been here. We're going to be here in one form or another. And our heirs will be here, and our heirs' heirs, and our ancient ancestors are still here, and we are them returned. Haven't gone anywhere, still here. Not going anywhere because all these resources in this estate belongs to us. Why would we leave it? Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 21. I believe this is 20 and 21. And again, the he and the Christ is the heir. According to the working of his mighty power, that's why we say mighty mores. We didn't realize that, but we know now. And that's why we are called the mighty mores. According to the working of his power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, that means that we're no longer denationalized in the court world, presumably. We are alive now. It says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and above every name that is named, that's why we don't have names because we're above them, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. We're there, that which is to come. We're moving into that now because we are alive, not dead. And we never really were. We just needed to take that corporate covering off of us, that corporate mask, and be ourselves on our own land. So the bibliotech with its mistranslation, albeit, is still telling us who we are and still declaring and proclaiming our might and our power and our dominion over the earth. 
That's why they would only let us read the Biblio to see if we still knew. We do know now. Are there any questions about that? There, we could go on and on with scripture after scripture after scripture in that trust document that is, by the way, connected to the set of KV trust and the papal order and all of that until we've removed it. That's why we put out the Unum Sanctum, the sovereign Unum Sanctum document, stating that we are the Roman Pontiff in all lowercase letters in red. We are the original indigenous Roman and Greek and Phoenician and Ephesian and Philippian and Moabite and Canaanites. We're the original of all, not the corporate or the hypothecated. We're the original. If there are no questions or comments about that, we will um, conclude the call until tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this Wednesday call may go on to YouTube as a YouTube Live or a Facebook Live. We may move the call to that platform. The call will still be at the same time on the same day but we may move it to a live format, which is outside of my comfort zone, but <laughs> but um, I think it may be, you know, time to move it to that platform. So we're going to keep growing. And um, with that, peace and grand rising to the air.